in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sisters and brothers, most welcome. This Mass is being offered for Myrna Watson. Friends, this is the feast of Easter, the resurrection of our Lord, the most solemn feast in the church. Now, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, now let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak. You know the message that spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, and how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the, the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
from the Holy Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For us said, they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. That was a night of vigil for the disciples of Jesus. A night of sadness and fear. The men remained locked in the upper room. Yet, the women went to the tomb at dawn on Sunday to anoint Jesus' body. This anointing had been done very hastily on Friday because of the Sabbath which began at sundown. Their hearts were overwhelmed and they were asking themselves, how will we enter? Who will roll back the stone of the tomb? But here was the first sign of the great event. The large stone was already rolled back and the tomb was open. The tomb was found open and empty. The first thought of the women was that somebody had stolen the corpse. This shows how far the resurrection was from their minds. They went in haste to tell the disciples, Peter and John ran to the tomb. Later, that day, Christ appeared to Mary Magdalene, who was the leader of the team, to ten of the apostles, to Peter separately, according to St. Paul, to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Later on, he appeared often to the apostles and disciples in Galilee for a period of days. Although the accounts of the resurrection of Christ differ in many details in the different writings of the New Testament, 
The fact of the resurrection was stressed in all of them. This was the basis of the Christian faith. This was the main topic, the charisma of the preaching of the disciples. Had it not happened, Christianity would have been stillborn. It would have disappeared from Jerusalem and the world on the first Easter Sunday. Peter and his companions would have returned to their fishing nets and boats on Lake Gennesareth and Christ the good and the king of uh, and the kind man who had helped so many would have been forgotten in half a generation he was the messiah promised for centuries he was the suffering servant foretold by Isaiah, whose perfect obedience to his father had led him to the cross and the grave. His God and his love is infinite and incomprehensible to us. All I know and all I need to know is that I have sufficient proofs that God loves all men and women. The incarnation, the death and resurrection of his divine son for man's sake is the greatest proof of his love for us. As a necessary consequence from this act of divine love, we are guaranteed our, res our resurrection from the dead to a life of unending happiness and unending glory. Today, although we all are worried about the present situation in the world because of the pandemic, we know that our province is still in lockdown, yet let us be positive and optimistic. Let us thank God once more for the gift of Easter and for all that it means for us. Friends, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promise of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven 
and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water, and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, as we joyfully celebrate Jesus' victory over death in this Eucharist, let us continue his priestly ministry of interceding for peace in the world, the needs of the Church, and the whole human family. For the Church, witness to Jesus risen and present among us in our daily lives, and for the family of God gathered here in Easter joy, that we bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the recovering, the homebound, those undergoing treatment, especially Carol Riche, Philip Paracal, Kitty Patino, Rosemary Bowick, Melissa McKenna, and for their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spiritual and physical well-being <clears throat> of our parishioners and visitors, and for all those who have died from our families and from our community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our benefactors and volunteers, and for Myrna Watson, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for the safety of all travelers in this holiday weekend, and for all the personal and family intentions of each one attending this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead, as he promised us, in peace, and joy, we present our prayers to you. Through the same risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us 
the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Yes, God. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with the Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. To acclaim you, O Lord, on this day when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the Lamb, true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with the Paschal joy, every land, every people, excels in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with the saints Cecilia and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and the Order of, Order of the Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, a merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, your servant, Myrna Watson, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in her resurrection. When from the earth he will rise up in the flesh, those who have died and transform in our lovely body, after the pattern of his own glorious body, to our departed sisters and brothers too, and to all who are pleasing to you, and they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are. We shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At this Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin 
and save from all distress as we wait in the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your pastor's peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that ye should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I like to wish you all a very, very happy and blessed Easter. Now we pray together. Heavenly Father, in these trying days, we humbly seek your guidance, wisdom, protection, and help in regards to the COVID-19 pandemic. That you would grant speedy recovery to those inflicted with the virus and protection to those who have not come into contact with it. We admit to you, O oh Lord, that you are the only authority and power to see us through this situation. For we are mere mortal people, totally reliant on you and you alone. As your son Jesus taught us, look to your heavenly Father above for all things, and it will be granted unto you. So merciful Father, we trust in you. And the words of your dear son Jesus, to look after us in this time and every time. In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you, and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.